Do you have an inkling of this? Because we're being told that um, both the Scottish government and all the officials of Butte House were sort of caught on the hop with this this morning. I think it surprised everybody. It came as a massive surprise to me. I think it's really surprised everybody in Scotland and indeed across the UK. She certainly passed the test of people questioning uh, this morning why she's going rather than people asking why she's still there. So in that sense, yes, it was a, a very great surprise. Uh, was it um, politics? Was it personality? Because looking at what she said, um, saying it's not a reaction to short term pressure, we assume that she means, means the, the trans debate. Um, but I no longer felt I could give the job everything it deserves. Then talking about taking Scotland through the pandemic, uh, I had only started to comprehend the physical and mental impact on me. I am a human being as well as a politician. I mean, has it really that, you know, it's, this is a personal. Um, reflection that she can't cut it anymore. Well, I thought her statement was very dignified, very moving, actually. I think it's quite difficult to disentangle the, the personal from the professional in actual fact. And I thought one of the most significant things she said during her statement was about this being a reflection of the polarised nature of politics, because in the fact that she has become quite a polarising figure. That's, I think that's really because she's been very centrally involved in these big debates that we've had across uh, the UK and, of course, in Scotland over the last few years. Independence in Scotland up to and obviously since the independence referendum in 2014. And then Brexit, where there was a very strong Scottish dimension to that, given that Scotland voted most decisively of any part of the UK to stay in the European Union. So I think she's been at the heart in many ways, of these big binary political questions over the past number of years. So I think inevitably that polarisation of opinion has attached itself to her. You yeah. might argue she's done extraordinarily well to have continued in post with such a high level of support, having been involved in such a... Uh, such binary issues. So I think in terms as well as her, her, her record that hopefully we'll, we'll get on to talk about or certainly do in the, in the coming days, I think to some extent, as much as it being about her, I think it's also a reflection, her decision today, about the, the polarised, sort of very binary nature of politics that we've had in Scotland and across the UK, really over quite a large number of years now. Yeah, well, Alex Salmond has paid tribute by saying no question of Nicola's talents as a first-rate political communicator and election winner, um, I, having been there. I feel for her personally on the day of her resignation. Is there perhaps a reflection that she's miscalculated on the whole issue of gender recognition and trans rights? And that maybe was what really broke her political career in the end. I think it's been an accumulation. Again, if we're talking about binary issues, then that yeah. has in many ways, um, ironically, you might say, been something of a, a binary question in itself. So I think it's been an accumulation. There's possibly been an aspect that if you look at some of these, you know, let's put to one side the arguments for or against the gender recognition reform legislation. In a sense, it, it's a, it was a very, very big political issue to take on for a devolved government within the UK. I think sometimes we might forget that Holyrood is actually a devolved administration. And to have on this policy area a radically different regime from that which applies elsewhere in the UK is actually quite difficult, quite challenging. There's mm. legal and other constraints there as well. So I think there's other questions as well where, where Scotland's looking to do things very differently.